What's something from the early days of the internet which younger generations may not know about? I used to keep a magazine beside the computer so I could read something while waiting for a web page to load. You have to try to put yourself into a mindset of how you would go about finding things on the internet in the days before popular search engines like Google or social media. Discovery of content ended up being due to word of mouth, ISPs and their services, or finding links from other sites you knew about. I remember a lot of fan pages fan sites for different things would all have sections of affiliate links to other similar fan pages and sites in a mutual effort to help people discover other similar content. I was thinking about it just the other day, it's crazy how centralized the internet has become, how everything now revolves around a handful of sites. Back in the day going online was basically like going on an adventure, there was no hub, how long it's been since I was recommended a cool website. I remember I had a magazine from like 2000 something, where they had a list of the 50 best websites on the web, that whole idea feels so archaic nowadays. That's why it was called surfing. Because you'd go to a site, then catch a link to another, and then to another. It's like you were riding from one to the next, and could end up at a totally unexpected place. <laughs> Yahoo used to have what was intended as a top-down directory of the entire internet, created by hand. It was incredibly useful at the time. <laughs> Being a fline. Now everyone is online all the time. But going online was an actual limited time thing you went and did and then when you are done you got offline. Now being online is a permanent state of being. Yep, going on the internet was an actual activity you would do. The excitement of upgrading from a 28k modem to a 56k modem and Gmail being by invitation only when it was first launched. Under construction banners, images, and GIFs. They were on every page, the page was always under construction. You'd put one there while you were writing the HTML then take it out when the final version was done, but way too many people never bothered with that step. Visitor counters and guest books. I almost always left a message. Flash and shockwave content, especially the games. Trogda the Burninator. Waiting for an hour for an image to download line by line me and my sister downloaded the teaser trailer to toy story on our 14.4 kbps modem via prodigy i remember we had it going all day long and yelled at my parents not to pick up the phone when it finished we watched it on real player and it was like 12 seconds long and blurry f but it was so glorious i remember one of my friends asking me have you heard of youtube and i said no I attempted to explain all your base are belong to us to the young co-worker and she refused to believe it was a real thing. That computer speakers could predict phone calls. ICQ, AIM, and MSN High, ASL 35 slash MMN. You? I vividly remember being in a work cafeteria in 2000 and realizing just how widespread internet usage was becoming by overhearing a co-worker on the phone to Rogers trying to select an email username. Everything was taken. She'd started with her initial and last name, then full name, then period between, then adding a birth year, and about 10 minutes later she settled on the most ridiculous, Frau Frau name just because it seemed to be the only one available. I wonder how many people are still using their first handles just out of habit. The need to set a good away message on AIM, since it may be up for over a day before you can get back on. The web pages that were way too flashy. Falling snow, custom cursors, music randomly playing, animated gifs everywhere. Chat rooms. Nowadays. Everyone just chats through messengers and social media, but back then, we had to join a website to connect with people online and only could do so a few hours a day as there weren't any flat rates yet. Edit, holy moly, this blew up overnight. Thanks for all the upvotes, folks. Took me a while to comprehend all the ASL comments as a non-English speaker. Also, while I agree that Discord is the closest thing to chat rooms we have these days. It still feels kind of different to me.
it's more like chat rooms and messengers had a child that made another generation with forums. Please don't haunt me on that image. The cool kids hung out on IRC, not chat rooms. I still say IG was peak social media. Downloading a song from Lemuire and then going to listen to it and then you hear I did not have sexual relations with that woman. LimeWire used to be an art form. Finding songs that aren't virus was art, and skill haha. It was even harder when looking for other things like movies or prawn. The viruses were a lot more spread out on that stuff. Downloading entire albums song by song was great. I believe I still have some songs I got from Lemuire somewhere lol. I remember downloading a song that was titled incorrectly, so for the longest time I thought this certain song was something completely different than it was and didn't realize it for years. That files one meg. Guess I'll go to bed now and check it out in the morning, and say a prayer the connection didn't glitch out sometime in between. No download managers in sight either. If your mom picked up the phone with 240 KB left to go and the connection bombed, you were starting all the way over. Get off the internet, I need to make a phone call. I always thought the biggest thing a younger person would notice is how hard it was to access period. Not the difficulty signing on but finding a place to get on. We can just get on our cell phone and look up game cheat codes or item locations. I remember going to a friend's house with a notebook and writing down stuff for FF7 or going to cheat code central. Fast forward to like 2007 and I was still going to a friend's house and printing off Vice City codes and item locations. Many brands having child friendly sites that had flash games and no monetization beyond it being an ad. Played Nabisco Mini Golf a lot. Homesterona.com Ibormsworld.com Flash game sites in general. Everything is an app now Miniclip addicting games 247 Arcade Town. Dedicated internet forums for specific things instead of a subreddit. There were like many communities and if you spent enough time on them you went there for the community rather than the actual subject matter. I know forums sort of still exist but they're nowhere near what they were. I spent wasted some great times on forums for niche games and I didn't even game much. In the very old days, to send email you had to explicitly list out all the computers the mail would have to be routed through to get to the destination. Thank you Eric Ullman for send mail. Finally something from the real old days, not 15 years ago. Before it was all corporate. So many homemade pages. For any interest you could think of. I don't mean MySpace or Tumblr, either. Crappy HTML, blinking graphics, instrumental music in the background. I met one of my oldest online friends in 1997 through a site he made for our favorite band. We were email penpals for years before social media was a thing. Lemuire. Linkin Park num mp3 x 40 to kb Seems legit. Why is the computer so hot? Not gonna lie, if you kids saw what we could do to our MySpace pages back in the day, you'd flip your shit. Custom backgrounds, musical playlists right there on our page. And don't forget the feature that no other social media has dared to attempt due to the absolute wars this started, the top 8. Those of you who were there with me in the early aughts, you know exactly the kind of drama I'm talking about. The pop-ups. Oh my god, the pop-ups. You'd open a web page and 20 windows would open and most of them were porn ads. It took a while for pop-up blokers to become a thing. Now you can't even advertise with pop-ups because all browsers block them by default. I still occasionally refer to my ad bloker as my pop-up bloker. IRC. Internet Relay Chat. Big chat networks like DLNet in the late 90s where you could find mental health and hobby channels and big file sharing channels for Wares, MP3, and PR0N. Forums. People on Reddit right now seem to think they are being persecuted if they get warned or banned from a subreddit. Back in the day, you had individual forums. And if you wanted to stay there, you did what the owner's rules said. Because nobody gave a shit if you thought you were unfairly banned. And it was difficult to find alternative forums, so you had to deal with it. 
The early internet was very, very slow. Even text-only websites would take time to load. You had to use the home phone line to be online, using a dial-up modem. Which meant you could talk on the phone or be on the internet, but not both. If you were a fancy rich person, maybe you had a second phone line just for the internet, but that was rare. And this was way before cell phones, when landline phones were much more important. My friend had a Prodigy account, which predates even AOL. The first time I ever used the internet, probably around 1990, we were on a Prodigy forum and my friend posted something with fuck or shit or the like. About a week later his dad got a letter in the mail, as in a paper letter through the post office, from Prodigy, stating that the language he used in the chat was inappropriate and please refrain from using bad words. It was a different age.